In this video, I want to present the revelation principle, which is actually a theorem in the theory of mechanism design. I briefly introduced mechanism design in a previous video. In short, mechanism design aims at designing rules of interactions between agents so as to optimize some global outcomes, while keeping in mind that agents will behave in their own best interest. When presented like this, it might seem like optimal mechanism design is a hopeless enterprise as the set of rules of interaction seems way too large and unstructured for any relevant theory to emerge. Fortunately, the revelation principle will allow us to greatly simplify the mechanism design problem almost without loss of generality. I can state it in a rough manner as follows. For any mechanism, there is an incentive compatible mechanism with the same equilibrium outcomes. Now there are a few subtleties I need to dwell on. First is the notion of an equilibrium. I have been purposely vague here, but in game theory there are actually several equilibrium concepts. The most popular of them all is probably the Nash equilibrium, which is a setting where every agent behaves optimally with respect to the other agent's behaviors. Then there is the Bayes-Nash equilibrium, we may also consider a dominant strategy equilibrium or collusion-free equilibrium, and so on. Let's now focus on the idea of equilibrium outcomes. Recall that the mechanism is a way to transform inputs given by agents and their interactions into outputs. But we need to keep in mind that agents will not necessarily behave as we would want them to, rather they behave in a way that they consider optimal, which is precisely what is modeled by one of the equilibrium concepts. So the outcomes that we can expect are only those that correspond to agents playing an equilibrium, not those that correspond to the behaviors we would want them to. This is what we mean by equilibrium outcomes. These are the outcomes that we get when agents play an equilibrium. So it might be tempting to think that all we need to care about are the equilibrium outcomes, whether they were obtained through some unethical behavior may not be relevant to us after all. Now the beauty of the revelation principle is that it claims that we don't have to settle with unethical behaviors whenever unethical behaviors lead to some positive equilibrium outcomes, then the revelation principle gives us a constructive way to modify the rules of interactions so as to obtain positive equilibrium outcomes while enforcing the fact that the equilibrium agents will want to play is ethical, namely truthful. So how does this magical trick work? Mathematically speaking, it's actually merely a function composition. Indeed, a mechanism can be regarded as a function that takes into account inputs of the agents and that yields some outputs. Now, the input of this function is actually twisted by the agent's strategies. In a very general setting, agents may typically use private information to determine their inputs to the mechanism so that the equilibrium outcomes are obtained by applying the mechanism to the inputs given by agent strategies which are determined by the private information. The idea of the revelation principle is to foresee the agent's strategic behaviors and to include it in the mechanism design through a function composition. This allows us to construct a revelation mechanism that takes into account agent's private information and outputs the equilibrium outcomes. Note that the revelation mechanism then becomes a direct mechanism, that is, a mechanism whose inputs are private information. An agent's strategy for such direct mechanisms is then a way of revealing private information, which may be done truthfully or not. Now, the revelation principle, which once again is actually a theorem, claims that truthfulness will be an equilibrium for the revelation mechanism. Let us prove this in the case of the Nash equilibrium. Assume that all agents but agent I behave truthfully for the revelation mechanism. Agent I then wonders if he should behave truthfully as well. To answer this, he needs to consider an alternative to truthfulness, which we'll call T'I, prime and he needs to ask himself whether he prefers the revelation mechanism applied to truthful strategies to the direct 
mechanism applies to the truthful strategies played by other agents, except for the ith coordinate, which is the one that is controlled by agent i, where he plays t prime i instead of truthfulness. But when comparing these two, agent i then notices that by definition of the revolution mechanism, the first term is the mechanism, the initial mechanism applied to s1 uh, composed with the truthfulness of agent 1 and so on and see how sn applied to the truthfulness of agent n except that truthfulness is basically the identity function in the space of private information so this is actually equal to the mechanism applied to the strategy at equilibrium so this is really the equilibrium outcome well the second term here is actually m applied to well the strategies at equilibrium except for the coordinate i here which will be si applied to t prime i which we can write s prime i where s prime i is going to be equal to si composed with t prime i but by the very definition of the Nash equilibrium of the strategy profile s1 to sn we know precisely that agent i prefers the former outcome to the latter this proves that Agent I has incentives to be truthful when playing the revelation mechanism and when he assumes that all the agents will be truthful as well. Since this holds for all agent I, we have proved precisely that truthfulness is a Nash equilibrium for the revelation mechanism. And I'll let you prove as an exercise that the revelation principle holds as well for all the equilibrium concepts I've introduced in this video. The takeaway message of the revision principle is that almost without loss of generality, mechanism design can be restricted to the analysis of direct mechanism, that is mechanisms whose input spaces are the agent's private information, for which truthfulness satisfies some equilibrium concept. This idea has been instrumental in the development of clever mechanisms like the VCG mechanism or the Myerson's auction as we shall see in future videos. To conclude, I do want to mention one case where the revision principle does not really apply, and this is the case where the space of private information is too large to be used in practice. As an example, this may occur when dealing with higher order beliefs. If we demand the input space to be much smaller than the space of private information, then the revision principle no longer applies straightforwardly. Evidently, and that may be the reason why this is not so widely studied in the literature, the mechanism design problem in such a setting loses part of its nice structure.